Sandra Spielsberg is a contemporary artist, and we call her that because she is still alive. She is a Canadian artist, and she uses lots of lines, color, shapes, patterns, and repetitions in her artworks. In this artwork, you can see her lines vary from thin lines to thick lines to curvy lines to more geometric shapes. She uses pattern to create repetition. Repetition makes an artwork more interesting. We see she uses little tiny lines to create this repetition throughout her artwork. There isn't much space in her artworks. It's mostly flat. They're not very 3D, they're mostly two-dimensional. Sandra has something called synesthesia. That means when she looks around at her world, she doesn't see colors, shapes, and lines the way we do. Here's what she has to say about her synesthesia. I am a synesthesia goddess. I have no fear of color. It comes in my so it lives in my soul, dances in my heart, spills out of my fingers, and flows down a canvas. I see your aura. I taste the color black. I feel the chill of the green wind. Smell blue butterflies. Hear the yellow rain. Life is never boring when inspiration is always around. Can you see how she can taste and feel color in her artwork? Sandra creates lots of portraits when she makes art, which is what we will be focusing on in our next project. We are going to start a project that is inspired by a contemporary artist. We will be creating lines to create the designs of the face, and as you know, lines are an element of art. We will be using glue to create those lines. Once it is dry, we'll be using chalk pastels to add the beautiful bright color that Sandra adds to her artwork. So to get started, you will need black paper. I'm working on blue so that my lines show up to show you what to do. You'll be using pencil, however, I will be using Sharpie so that my lines show up for you. You're using, that's right, pencil. And you will also be using, of course, your lovely glue. So to get started, you're going to write your name and class code. Remember, your class code is the first letter of your teacher's name and your grade level and you're going to flip your paper over. Okay, we are going to start. I'm going to start with the big long nose that Sandra uses and we're going to start with a dot in the very middle. It only needs to be big enough for you to see. And we're going to draw a line that goes from that dot vertically to the top to the top or straight up okay and then I'm going to make a shorter horizontal line horizontal means it goes like the horizon line and it's going to be shorter so I'm gonna go just like that to make a capital L okay so now I'm going to go parallel to my horizontal line. And I'm going to stop before I get to my horizontal line. And then I'm going to go parallel to my horizontal line. And I'm going to close that off. And there I have my nose. Now I'm going to make my eyes. Sandra makes elliptical shapes, just like we make for our eyes. I'm going to make these eye shapes by drawing horizontal lines. So I'm going to draw that horizontal line that goes all the way across my paper. And Sandra's eyes are really large, so I'm going to make mine large as well. And I'm going to make that elliptical shape by going in an arc all the way from that point to that point. And that's half of my eye. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing down here. Okay, so now I have my eyelid and I have the part that will become my eyeball. So now I need to make my iris. Usually you can't see all of your iris, you can just see part of it, so I'm gonna make 
two rounded lines and then you have your pupil which is the black part in the middle we're not going to make this black we're just going to make it a circle okay so now I'm going to make my other eye usually they're symmetrical which means that they're the same on both sides but maybe I want my eyes to look a little different so maybe I want my eyes to my eye to be a little lower over here okay maybe I want it to be even a little bigger and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to use that elliptical shape to connect those two ends here and then do the same thing on the bottom and I'm going to make my iris in the center and my pupil okay so that gives it a little variety variety makes it interesting it's not just the same thing over and over so now I'm going to add some lines to my eyelids maybe you want to add some curvy lines maybe I'm on this eye to add variety I want to do something different and I want to add some straight lines while I'm thinking about adding lines close together you don't want to get them too close together here I almost got them too close together and when I start adding this glue that glue might run together because when I put this glue down it's going to spread out a little bit and when that glue spreads it's going to all kind of start running together so you don't want to make any lines that are going to run in to each other and you'll see what I mean when you start gluing yourself and when I show you how I glue. So be careful that you don't make any lines that are too close to each other. So now I can start drawing the rest of my face. I can draw a short vertical line. Remember that goes up and down and that's going to go down to where I want my mouth to start. And now I want to draw the arch of my mouth and I want to practice with my finger before I draw my actual line. I think I want it to be kind of right in there. So I'm going to draw it. Ooh, kind of looks sad. I just want it to be neutral, so I'm gonna draw that line across, and then I'm going to draw the bottom lip. Okay, and then I'm going to draw, that, continue that line down and I'm ready to draw my chin line. Doesn't have to be the same on both sides. That gives it a little variety. And now you might have a lot of room at the bottom or you might have just a little room at the bottom like me. I'm going to draw my neck using two lines that go straight down. And then I'm going to use this bottom to draw a little curve for my neckline. And you want to add your shoulders. You don't want to draw shoulders that whoop, curve up. You're not shrugging. You don't want to draw them that go straight down. You don't want them to curve way down. Shoulders kind of go at a diagonal line. So whether you have a lot of room or a little bit of room, you can add a diagonal line for your shoulders. And then if you want to just add maybe an eyebrow line here. Okay. So for a finishing touch, I'm going to add my initials at the bottom. My initials are the first letter of my name and the first letter of my last name. So I'm going to add them here at the bottom. You're going to use pencil, of course. Remember, you're not adding the letters too close together. You want them to be pretty big so that your glue doesn't all run together. Okay, so you are ready to add glue. Okay, so I'm ready to glue. We're going to practice on a small scrap of paper. 
because often the glue doesn't come out the way we think it might come out. So I want you on a small piece of paper to give it a few practices and then you can go ahead and start. And remember, you might have to peel that top layer off if it's not coming out. Okay. So you can beginning, begin gluing the lines of the face. You're trying not to really scrape the glue on your paper. You're just trying to give it a nice line of glue. And when you get to the end of a glue line, you can kind of give it a nice little tap and then start your next line, get to the end and tap. 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 You're trying to stay on the glue lines. Tap. Tap. If you miss a spot, like right there, there's a little gap. You can go back and try to just fill that little space in. And you are going to continue until all of your lines are covered. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! When you're done, take it to the drying rack and go back to your seat.